The Bay of Fundy is home to the world's highest tides. Located between the provinces of New Brunswick and Nova Scotia, there are many ways to experience this incredible body of water. I really love exploring the Bay of Fundy. There's so many different ways to do it. Then to be able to walk on the beaches and see how far the tide goes out, it's just astounding. It's mind blowing how big and massive these tides are. They're 40 feet difference every six hours. It's unbelievable. And then I love exploring from above, especially the Three Sisters hike where you can go to all these different lookouts to see the beaches, the sea stacks and the sea cliffs. Now this just goes to show how big the tides really are here in the Bay of Fundy. Look at these boats, they're sitting on land right now at low tide. And when you look around, look at all the mountains around me. You can actually walk to those on the beach. 35, 40 foot changes every six hours, that's impressive. I highly recommend kayaking. It's one of the best ways to see the massive sea cliffs. To look back from the ocean is unbelievable and to circle all of those sea stacks, wild. We are heading out for a kayak around the Three Sisters now that it is high tide. I'm excited and the sun's coming out. Woohoo! Bay of Fundy people. Having the chance to do an overnight trip on the Bay of Fundy lets you see the huge difference between high and low tide. At times you can walk through formations and at others they are completely flooded leaving you just a little window to be able to paddle through. Well, there you have it. It's the three sisters behind me. We're here at low tide, so it's a very cool time to be here. You can see the base of them. It's been really great here on the Bay of Fundy because we've got to see the landscape at both low tide and high tide, which is drastically different. We're camping on the Bay of Fundy. We see some seals. We've landed here at Seal Cove and we've seen the weather change from beautiful sunny days to foggy days to beautiful mornings like this. It's a really great way to take in the beauty of the Bay of Fundy. Wow, that was a really cool experience to kayak on the Bay of Fundy. And then as we were paddling back, the fog came in. It's really ominous and very cool to just see it rolling in. It almost makes you think that a ghost ship is just around the corner. We are at the old shipyard beach, which is a very cool beach where more than 30 ships were made in the 1800s, just outside of Advocate Harbor here on the Bay of Fundy. A very interesting fact is that the Mary Celeste was built here and the Mary Celeste is one of the most famous ghost ship stories in the entire world. The entire crew and the captain along with his family disappeared and it's a mystery to this day. There was no sign of piracy, windows were open, there was food on the table, yet everyone just vanished and disappeared. That was built right here on this beach. Tidal bore rafting took us to the Shubenacadie River. Tidal bore rafting here on the Bay of Fundy. Feeling good, this is gonna be awesome. So we've gone for a little loop around the river and now we're standing on a sandbar. And in a few minutes, it's gonna be covered in 20 feet of water and we're gonna be riding right over it. So, ooh, it's gonna be fun. Look at how fast this is coming in, it's crazy. This is the only place in the world anyone can go tidal bore rafting and you can expect waves from 3 to 10 feet high. You'll ride on zodiacs as 100 billion tons of water churn up from the Bay of Fundy at high tide. The water squeezes into the mouth of the river. It churns and hits sandbar after sandbar making for an exhilarating ride similar to whitewater rafting. We 
got a great time tidal bore rafting here with River Run. You got to do it when you come to Nova Scotia. It's one of the best adventures and the most unique thing you will do here, period, hands down. One of the more impressive things to do when you're in Advocate Harbour is come to Chignecto Provincial Park and check out these red rocks. It's best to do it at low tide because you get a way better view. Lighthouses are a large part of East Coast heritage and the lighthouses along the Bay of Fundy offer some spectacular views. It's Burnt Coat Head Park in Nova Scotia. Burnt Head Coat Park is the accessible Bay of Fundy walk in Nova Scotia. It has a visitor center and you have a chance to walk on the ocean floor. I'm gonna get muddy, I think. Word of caution, it's muddy. So wear shoes you don't mind getting dirty. Or you may have to scramble a bit like I did. Welcome to New Brunswick. Come to the caves of St. Martin. When you're in St. John, you have to come out to the caves at St. Martin. When it's low tide, you can walk right out and get into them. Man, is it beautiful. In St. Martin, and this is a really cool thing when it's low tide, you can see the boats are sitting on the ocean floor. When the tide comes in, they rise way up. St. Martin's is a picturesque town that has stunning sea caves. You can walk out and explore them at low tide, but beware, at high tide they flood completely. Boats sit on the seabed waiting for tides to come in and covered bridges span the quiet river. It's a jumping off point to explore the famous Fundy Parkway and it's a great place to start your exploration of the Bay of Fundy once you leave St. John. Well, what a difference a few hours makes. We were just walking in those trick caves before. Now it's just filled with water and a, and a day. <laughs> Come on out to Duck Pond Beach and at sunset low tide, it's gorgeous. Very few tourists visit Duck Pond Beach, but locals in St. John, New Brunswick will tell you it's their favorite sunset spot. Plus, you won't have to contend with tourists like the Caves of St. Martins, and you'll have the beach all to yourself. The Fundy Trail Parkway is a 12-mile drive hugging the imposing coast featuring more than 20 lookouts, long secluded beaches, hiking routes, waterfalls, and rock formations. This will soon continue along the coast, connecting the parkway with the famous Hopewell Rocks. We are at the Hopewell Rocks on the Bay of Fundy. These are the highest tides in the world, baby. And look at that, when the tide comes in, this is all covered in water. I'm walking on the ocean floor, man. The Hopewell Rocks are one of the most accessible ways to explore the floor of the Bay of Fundy. At low tide, visitors can walk on the ocean floor for three hours before and three hours after the lowest tides. The Flower Pot Rocks are a top draw in New Brunswick and it's a beautiful place to visit at sunset. Cape and Rage is another popular stop on the Bay of Fundy with a beautiful lighthouse view, a chance to zip line, rock climb, or just enjoy the beach and the scenery. While visiting the Hopewell Rocks and Caves of St. Martins, you'll have the opportunity to drive through Fundy National Park. It's another chance that shows beautiful views of the coast. Plus, there are plenty of outdoor experiences like hiking, waterfront trails, boardwalks and 
lots of look at. The Bay of Fundy has the world's highest tides, moving more than 100 billion tons of water every 6 hours and 13 minutes. That's more flow than all the world's freshwater rivers combined. The tides range from 35 to 55 feet every day. Our final stop on the Bay of Fundy takes us to St. John to the Reversing Falls. This phenomenon occurs twice daily as the Bay of Fundy's high tides collide with the St. John River, reversing the water's flow. It's a cool thing to see the river flowing one way and then smashing against the tide, creating rapids and whirlpools. And while you're at it, why not do a zip line overhead? If you're going to travel along the east coast of Canada, be sure to give yourself a lot of time to explore the Bay of Fundy. Cheers. Good day. Cheers. Cheers to a good day. Yeah. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We post new videos every week from the 110 countries that we visited. If you're looking for travel inspiration or information, be sure to check out our playlist.